and um, keep the wheels turning. Wonderful. Well, thank you uh, for that. And everybody, thank you for joining. Um, let me just uh, uh, lay down a couple of ground rules. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and we'll get started. The ground rules are, uh, this is, today is a Thursday. Today is No Judgment Thursday. So um, uh, no judgment if you have your cameras on or off. No judgment if you share or don't share. If you do have the nerve to share, I promise you it's a wonderful experience and nobody will judge the quality of your writing. Um, they will only judge you on the fact that you're being very brave and open and, and honest, but don't feel that you need to. I work with a lot of organizations. Um, some of them, it's the sharing part of it that is the most, I hate to use the word therapy, but therapeutic. That's the thing that's because um, uh, the whole purpose for my workshops, the way I base mine is we need to change the conversation that we have with ourselves. And um, that's what traditional expressive writing is. And it's very different to think a certain way. It's way different to try to change the way you think. It's miles different to write out things so that you can understand the way that you are hearing your thoughts. And then it's miles away from that to actually hear yourself do it. Um, and uh, if you can understand this, I wrote uh, my last book was uh, Cycle of Lives. It's 15 people's stories uh, that dealt with the, it, we just dealt with the emotional side of their cancer journeys. And I interviewed 15 people over a couple of year period and got into their traumas, uh, childhood, adolescent, young adult traumas, and how those traumas affected their ability or inability to deal with um, connecting with people on the emotional side of the journeys that they were going through. And these were doctors, patients, loved ones, survivors, current, you know, had one and done cancer 30 years ago, were in the middle of their fifth bout with cancer, you name it. It was uh, a, 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 an oncologist at NYU had been uh, an oncologist for 40 years, you know, all different kinds of people. And to hear them talk about things that were in their head, but they had never talked about was just a transformative for them. When I wrote their stories and I went back and forth with my editor over about a year period, she said, all right, last thing you need to do is read it out loud. So I read the book out loud to myself and I changed about 90% of it because how we hear ourselves in our head is so different than the way we hear ourselves in, uh, in, in real life. And uh, the example I give, I'm sorry if anybody came before and I'm repeating the example, but the example I give is imagine that you go to a public pool. Okay, it's been a long time since you've been at a public pool and you're not kind of in the greatest shape, but it doesn't matter. You see that 40, 40 foot platform and you're like, you know what? I haven't jumped off of that thing forever, man. I am going to go do it. And you start climbing up and you get on top of there and you look over and you go, oh my God, this was the stupidest idea ever. What the hell am I doing? I, I have no business being up here. And then you look around and you see the people and they're looking at you and they go, oh, you go, oh, great. Yeah, they all think I'm fat in this bathing suit. I look absolutely horrible. They think I'm an idiot. I can't do it. And you just talk yourself. We all been there, right? Imagine if you had gone to the pool with your friend and their nine-year-old girl said, come on, can I, can I go up there and jump off that platform? And when she got up to the top of the platform, would you get out your megaphone and go, hey, you, the fat kid in the bathing suit over there that looks like you're scared to jump. What the hell do you think you're doing up there? We would never talk to other people the way we talk to ourselves. What expressive writing does is it allows you to change the conversation you have with yourself and understand that you need care in a very, very special way because we have to reverse if we can or at least expose and try to understand the thousands of times we beat ourselves up mentally, the thousands of times we convince ourselves we don't need to deal with a trauma and we, we put it in a box and we lock it up and we sit on it. We don't let it out. We just keep it tucked away in the brain. Expressive writing helps us bring it out. Okay. So that is kind of the, the basis for this. Um, it's so funny. I was just literally just on a phone with a 
with a, with a client I'm doing another one of these. And the example that I gave him was uh, on uh, uh, day after New Year's. Uh, so on the second, uh, we have cats. They're going out, outside the door and I couldn't, couldn't get them to just block the door. There's a bully cat out there and I don't want them to get at it. And, and they kept moving everything I put in front of the cat door. So finally I said, well, the best thing to do is to put a big weight. So I put a 30 pound weight on top of the cooler. And as I pushed the cooler in, the 30 pound weight fell on my toe. And I fell down like it was an 8.0 earthquake. And I started screaming bloody murder. My toes, I got out of a cartoon. It's so stupid. And the first 30 minutes I laid on the ground screaming, I, I just cursed myself for being such an idiot. And then I went, Dude, you're not an idiot. I mean, come on, don't be so mean to yourself. Like you're just not, you're not an idiot. You did something happened, right? <laughs> you, could, you, you couldn't have predicted that outcome. Now stop beating yourself up and just deal with it. So that that's what that's what we're doing here, and and that's what that's what uh, traditional expressive writing does is help you reframe those conversations. So, um, any questions or comments? Do I need to introduce myself also, or can I, you're, you're welcome to, to do so? It? Um, just super quick. What makes me want to do these things is uh, I've been doing them for a few years. Uh, uh, sometimes in person, uh, before the pandemic in person. Uh, uh, now I do them uh, mostly, but not all, uh, virtually and online. I love it um, because it's, it, it's it's great to have a few more, more tools to learn how to deal with the emotional side of trauma. And uh, who doesn't want, want those tools? And so um, my expressive writing workshops were born out of my desire to try to help people understand the emotions of trauma. Um, my story was I went out and wrote this book uh, kind of in relation to um, some things I saw with my sister. So I'm, I'm a writer by trade. Um, I've written several books, both as my, myself and, and ghostwritten and, and many other things. But I was drawn to this project when my sister was going through terminal brain cancer. And I, uh, a husband, young kids, living her best life, everything was great. And I noticed that people were really good about dealing with the tasks related to their cancer. Education, how do I get the chemo and get my kids watched? How do I navigate insurance? You know, all the tasks about it, they were pretty good at. But when it came to how do you feel, that's where, that's where we're in real quiet, especially if you weren't the one going through it and you were helping or watching somebody else go through it. Um, those connective conversations were very difficult. And every single person that I talked to, and since then it's thousands, to some degree has understood that concept of, like you never know what people are going through or what they have gone through. And so we kind of tend to isolate if we're the one going through something and we kind of tend to somewhat abandon or hope that we don't get engaged when we, somebody's going through something because we don't want to say the wrong thing or be an idiot. And so it can be a very lonely place. And that leaves us alone who we're not so nice to ourselves when we're alone to deal with these, these emotional issues. And so um, over the years, I developed some, some techniques that I think can help deal with that trauma. So that's why I'm here and that's why I do these things. So um, any questions before we get moving? Feel free to mute, unmute, put your cameras on, leave them off, whatever. Feel free to do all of that. So uh, with no questions, just some basics. If you look up expressive writing on the website, on any website or the, the internet, you're gonna find that expressive writing is basically journaling, okay? And traditional expressive writing says, take some time to write out your thoughts, whether it's a gratitude journal, whether it's a, uh, a, a recounting of the, the events. You know, my wife does a, a gratitude journal. She writes one thing she's grateful for. That's a type of journaling and it's, it's very self-care to, to end your night by being grateful for one thing. So traditional expressive writing is a journal in whatever form that takes. I think that expressive writing taken to another level is much more um, along the lines of self-care. And that would include some ex uh, uh, narrative and creative writing um, foundational things. So not only can we work on changing the 
dialogue that we have with ourselves, but how can we learn to really express what we're feeling? And um, so I try to teach people how to do that so that when you take time, and hopefully you take a lot of time to write things out and see how you feel about what you're going through or whatever, that you that you have some of these things in mind to help you better write expressively. Examples are, and some of the some of the foundational things that you'll need to know is is we want to answer three questions. Okay. Um, who are you writing to? So always think about that. Who are you writing to? What are you writing about? And why? Why are you writing it? So who, what, and why? Expressive writing, we don't do that, right? But in my kind of expressive writing, we do. Who, what, and why? So the who, are you writing to yourself? Are you writing to a spouse? Are you writing a, even though it might go in the shredder, are you writing a letter to somebody from your past? Are you writing a, a letter to yourself in the past? Who are you writing to? Because that way I want you to visualize who you're talking to and understand the language that you're going to use. Because if you're writing a letter to your doctor who embarrassed you the last time that you went to go see him or her um, and made you feel very uncomfortable, if you're writing that letter to try to understand like how that felt, it's going to be different language than you're going to use than if you're writing about that experience to a friend of yours, right? I would certainly dif differ in my, if I had the guts to tell my doctor, you embarrassed the hell out of me at that last meeting and you belittled me, make me feel like an idiot in front of your nurses and techs, I would deal with that conversation with that doctor differently than I would deal with the conversation telling my friend what happened. Okay, so who are you writing to? Let's just frame visually, like I can understand the language I'm gonna use. What are you writing is the second thing. Am I writing a letter? Am I writing about, a, about an event? Um, am I writing a, a gratitude letter? Am I, am I writing a letter to my future self because I wanna know, um, I want to plant seeds in my brain for who I want to be in three months. And I want to, I want to kind of paint that picture. Like what, what am I writing? Okay. Sometimes it's just a list of things. I'm writing a list of things, but other times it's, it, you know, it's, it's writing about an event. So what am I writing? And then the last thing is why, and why am I writing? Usually the why I'm writing is because I care about myself. That's usually why I'm writing. But sometimes the why is I got to get something off my chest before I can move on. The why I'm writing is because I might not be in the mindset three months or six months from now to deal with this issue that's eating me up inside and I need to get rid of it. There's a lot of different whys. Okay. And all of them are great, but understand what your why is because that will give you a sense of urgency. Does that make sense? So who... Who are you writing for to? What are you writing about and why? Okay, that's that's one thing. We're going to do some, some writing in a minute, but we're, I'm going to give you a couple other things to think about. Um, expressive writing is about feelings and not about events. Now, you, yes, you can write about an event, but you're not going to describe something. You're going to describe how you feel about it. A very, very simple exercise, and we can, we can work on this as our first prompt, but a very simple exercise is if you well, get ready for the prompt, because the prompt is, um, and, and if you can't, if it isn't a doctor's office, then it was a restaurant or it was a waiting room or it was something, but find a place that you recently went to where you have a feeling of it went really well or did not go really well. Lunch with a friend, doctor's appointment, waiting, waiting room at an ER, I don't even care, right? What, what, is there anything that comes to mind that's a place that you were at recently, went well, didn't go well? Okay. I had a breakfast this morning, breakfast meeting this morning that went exceptionally well. 
Okay. Now, I, I, I would use that if I were to prompt on that. Okay. Because I want to I want to remember a couple of things about that meeting because it was really important to me. It felt so good. So when you're writing about that, don't look at it as an event. Tell me about the feeling. So not it was cold when I had breakfast with so-and-so this morning. Not it was cold, but I'm so happy that we both thought it was too cold to sit outside because I would have been distracted by the cold. We moved to a booth and we were able to have a more intimate meeting because we weren't distracted. That's different than saying it was a cold morning, right? One talks about a feeling, the other talks just describing it was cold. Does that make sense? So when you can tr try to not um, uh, describe the event, describe the feeling, okay? Not I was mad, but I, I couldn't help myself from punching the roof of the car before I got in. That tells, that shows me how I'm mad, right? I could say, oh, I was so mad when I left the meeting. Yeah, that tells me it, but that's an event. Tell me the feeling. I, I was so angry after leaving that event that I had to punch the roof of the car before I got in. Or I got in, I, when, I was so mad when I got into the car, I screamed at the top of my lungs, thank, thank goodness the windows were down or somebody would thought I would, was getting attacked. That is, that is more descriptive, okay? And the last thing that I'm gonna tell you is to the extent that you can, don't use generic words. What do I mean by that? Any kind of movement, just try to make it a feeling. Okay, you didn't eat breakfast, you chomped at every bite. You didn't not eat breakfast, you didn't have the stomach to take a single bite. Okay, so tr try to, you didn't walk somewhere, you, you rushed somewhere. I, I just, that taps into the emotion. Does that make sense? Yes, nod, anybody that's on the screen, nod, if that makes sense. So try, anytime that you can use, oh, thank you, Lizzie. Anytime that you have the ability to edit yourself along the way, don't use a generic description of the action. Tell me an emotion. And we'll, we'll practice this some more. So here's what we're gonna do with the first, we're gonna do two to three prompts, however long we're, we're doing this. And, and, and again, share, don't share. We're all figments of each other's imagination. Nobody exists here but you. So don't worry about it. If you share, you share, and everybody's going to love you for it. If you don't share, everybody's going to love you for it too. So don't worry about that. But the first prompt is my last doctor's appointment. The last time I was in the ER. This morning's breakfast meeting. Whatever has something that makes sense to you of you have a feeling associated with it, a good feeling or a bad feeling. And we're gonna just take five minutes, just five minutes to try to write a description of that feeling. It could be terrible, it could be great, it could be benign, it could be whatever. Doesn't matter, no judgment, but it's just a, a warm up exercise. So what I'm gonna do is we have a chat, I'm welcome to, to stay on and chat. What I'll do just so we're not self-conscious is I'll turn off my video and mic, but I'm sitting here at my computer monitoring the chat. If, if you have a question or comment, just put it in there. What I like you to do is to say at last week's doctor's appointment, at this morning's breakfast meeting, uh, Saturday at the ER, whatever the, the prompt is, and then talk about a feeling, talk about something that reminds you of why that event popped into your head when I gave you this prompt. Does that make sense? Nice. I love Lizzie already. Thank you, Lizzie, for coming. You're my, you're my, you're my go-to. Ah, look at that. Okay, I'm turning it off. Uh, it's 422 where I'm at. I'm coming on in five minutes. Pick up a pen and start writing. And chat me if you need to.
and you all are way too smart. I got no chats to me or anything. We are done with prompt one. It's only exercise. If anybody made it through the whole story in five minutes, then you're too fast of a writer. Um, I am going to call anybody back that wants to put themselves on screen or not um, to unmute and see if you'd like to share. Does anybody want to give a shot at what they shared? Barb, is that you raising your hand? Nice. She's going to unmute herself. Okay. I'm and not sure how good it is, but it doesn't doesn't have to be good. <laughs> I said at last week's coffee with Pascal, I was validated to talk to someone who could help me understand my concerns with Kai and have an open dialogue with the options and suggestions on how to help him. That's fantastic. Thank you. you. Everybody get some feelings from that, right? That is fantastic. No, that's really great. I mean, honestly, that is really, really great. Thank you for sharing. Lizzie's clapping, so she's she's happy. Um, who else? Anybody else want to take a stab at sharing what they wrote about their quick meeting, the beginning of it? Yay. You don't look like Kurt. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm Janice. I'm Kurt. Janice. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Janice. He looks like Kurt. He looks like Kurt. <laughs> he signed <laughs> us up for this because he thinks I'm good at it, but he wouldn't raise his hand. So. All right. Beautiful. I don't know. So kind of this is really a true story. So. Yeah. All right. So Sunday I went to the ER. So funny that you brought that up <laughs> and was shortly thereafter admitted for what turned out to be ischemic colitis. The evening prior to that, I was at a friend's wedding and had the most incredible time. I should say we had the most incredible time. But my thoughts and emotions were all over the board now. I was frightened for myself, but also for my husband and children. We've been through so much trauma in our lives that I couldn't bear the idea of this being another horrific blow to our lives. That's expressive writing right there. Yeah. Because you probably were thinking that a hundred different ways, right? Yeah. How did it, I mean, not that I'm, you don't have to answer any questions I give you, but if you wanted to answer a question, how did, how did it make you feel? Well, I was, you know, I was somewhat angry thinking, here we go again. Um, mm -hmm. I was scared because I didn't know what brought it on. It literally came out of nowhere. It just unbelievable. Um, and uh, but but I have to say my care was my care through the hospital was fabulous, as well as my support from my family. So that just made me feel really incredible that I have so many people that were really concerned for mm -hmm. my um, on my behalf. So I had just all kinds of emotions. Okay, and uh, thank you for sharing all of that. And one of the reasons why expressive writing is so important, if you can do it when you can do it, is not just to self-care for the negative stuff, but also to self-care on the positive things. Because oftentimes when you're going through trauma, we tend to not recognize positive things that happen to us. And being grateful is a really powerful emotion, right? It really, it really can help us. And um, and having uh, empathy for yourself, having empathy for the people that love you involves a sense of gratitude because you, you know, it, you, you, who doesn't feel better when they understand themselves a little bit more, man, I went through a, 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 a transformation after I found out something that was holding me back about myself. And, and I, and, and I did it through a little bit of expressive writing. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, I'm so happy I finally figured this out. Like it's such a big deal. And so um, do focus on the positive and the negative. We're gonna do one more share and then I'm gonna try to hit another prompt. But uh, now that everybody's warmed up, if you don't share, I'll share. But I would like somebody to share because I think three is a good number to, to have. Anybody is brave. I'll share. Deborah, yes. yes. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Sure. 
At last week's dinner, I was disappointed that we were seated in a booth next to the door. It opened and closed so many times. It was distracting as the rush of cold air each time the door opened made it difficult to concentrate on the conversation with my good friend. For many weeks, our schedules had made it difficult to find a night to get together, and I had been so looking forward to reconnecting with her. Wow. I want to know what happens. <laughs> Anybody else? I want to know what happens, right? That is a combination of expressive writing and uh, narrative writing. Because you're telling a story, but you're also expressing emotion. Really, really great, Deborah. Are you a writer? I do love to write. I'm not a writer. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone's a writer. Yeah, um, I guess. And by the way, we uh, nothing. You can't write anything that's not been written before. It's just you got to do it in your own voice, right? Um, I always love one of my favorite uh, quotations is from uh, Pablo Picasso, and he said, "Mediocre artists borrow, great artists steal." Ah, there's nothing you, you, you're either borrowing or stealing if you're an artist. <laughs> It's just, you got to steal it to be a really good artist. So I would steal that. That was awesome. All right. We're going to do one that's a little bit tougher. And look, you can go back and finish the story if you can. I mean, I really like it. Uh, Janice, Janice, right? Not Kurt, Janice. Uh, if you wanted to continue that scene and how it played out and, you know, more about the emotion that you felt about it and, oh, uh oh, here we go again. Or maybe not. Maybe you don't go again. And thank goodness. But whatever. You could finish that later. Okay. Later tonight, tomorrow, a year from now, whenever. Okay. But these are really good things to do. That one of my favorite prompts, and I'll tell you a super uh, quick story. One of my favorite prompts is writing a letter to somebody from your childhood, somebody who's not in your life now. So go on a little journey with me. I remember when you were six or eight or 10 years old and somebody was really, really impactful in your life. Even if it was a two minute interaction, it's never left you. Okay. And you've thought about it. Eh, maybe you don't think about it for 10 years. Sometimes you think about it three days in a row and you don't think about it for another five years and it's just whatever. Something happens and it triggers an, a, 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 an emotion in you that is drawn out of that experience with that person in your childhood but it sticks with you so i'll tell you how where i go with this prompt sometimes not all the time but sometimes with this prompt i'll go to because it allows me to express emotion um, which is a really positive thing okay uh, so i like to use this prompt as a letter to that person okay in my case how this happened was i did not have a very fun childhood and if I could get out of the house, if I was not told to get out of the house, if I could get out of the house, I was free from all the nonsense, right? And I, when I was like six or seven years old, just fell in love with this little girl that lived like three store, three three streets away. And oh my God, I don't know what a six or seven year old does when they fall in love. You go on a swing and you say stupid stuff to each other. I don't even know. But all I remember is one day I went to go see her. Um, Thankfully, I was out of the house, right? So I, was, I, I went to go see her and there was a big moving truck in front of her house. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And I peek in and there's all these people moving things and, and oh my God, they're not moving. And I see her and she walks out of the house and she sits on the stoop. And so I go sit on the stoop next to her and she gives me a Tootsie Roll Pop. And she tells me that her family's moving. And I never saw her again, never, in, you know, but every once in a while, especially when I had young kids that were like six or seven years old and we were at the grocery store and they would want to buy something at the checkout counter. And if there happened to be a Tootsie Roll pop there, I'd be like, oh my God, that, that day, you remember that day? And I go, oh yeah. Then I won't think about it for 10 years. But I, if I could, and I've done it many times, 
if I could write a letter to her, the letter that I would write her would be one to say, oh my God, I don't know anything about anything, but I do know one thing. Like I have a feeling inside when I think about Tootsie Roll Pops, because I can see you on the stoop and you were as bummed out about having to move as I was. I don't know what the heck six or seven year olds would know about anything like that, but we both shared that feeling and it's never left me in all these years. Right. And what, what that does is that probably subconsciously allows me to heal some of the trauma that I went through as a kid, at least in the feelings around that time, because that's such a positive memory for me. And it's such, such a safe place for me to go and revisit. So I like to write about it sometimes and I write the letter different, but it's usually about the same. And it's kind of self care. So, what I would like you to do for prompt two, and we take a little bit more time with this is whether it was a positive experience like that. Some people might think that was negative, but whatever. Um, if it's a positive experience or a negative experience, somebody you know, made fun of your body, somebody kicked you in the leg, uh, a teacher screamed at you, you had a best friend stick up for you, whatever it is, I don't even know, but you were six, seven, eight, ten 10 years old, not, not much older than that. And it's that one person like, oh, my God, I still remember when. But you never seen them since or, you know, you've lost contact over the decades. And, but you could sit down and write a letter. That's what you're going to do. You're going to write a letter. So, hey, I would have said, hey, I don't even know her name. I say, hey, hey, Tootsie Roll Pop Girl, let me tell you a story. And that's the way I start my little thing something like that, right? So let's take a little bit more time if we're okay with that, like maybe eight minutes or so, and start this letter to that person and try to try to make an emotion, try to talk about the emotion of that experience. I'm here. If you want to chat me, chat me, and let's get to work.
Two more minutes. Take your time. Oh, we got two more minutes. My timer's counting down. There we go. Whoop. Time is up. What do you think? Did anybody write a letter? Basso, did you think of someone? This was hard. <laughs> this was, I, I thought it was real hard. I, I did think of someone. Um, I'm a too wordy, I'm a very wordy person. I would make a horrible author. Well, that's wait a second. Uh, what what did Hemingway say? Right, right, right junk, right, right drunk at it sober. <laughs> you wouldn't be a you wouldn't be a terrible writer. You would just have to do a lot of editing. Done it. Um, maybe you only made a, a paragraph into that. But did you find someone? Did you tap into an emotional memory? I did. Okay. Did it make you smile or make you cry or any of that? It it was a gratitude. Uh, for having been crying, this person came in and uh, you, you said to go way back. So that's where I was trying to go. Mm -hmm. um, so do you want me to read it or? Yeah. If you're willing to share, I think it would be wonderful. Okay. I said, uh, I try to read my chicken scratch. Dear Steve, I want to thank you. Um, you are my summer camp counselor when I didn't want to go to summer camp. I was so sad to leave home because my mom had just found out she was expecting another baby. Um, I would now be more than 10 years older once this baby, 10 years older than this baby when it is born. I knew enough to know that life would never be the same and that this was gonna make things even more difficult financially for my parents at the time. You took me on a hike to see a beautiful waterfall peace and comfort and reassurance that in the end everything would work out doesn't sound too wordy to me anybody <laughs> any any anybody want to comment any any ideas any lizzie's always there with her thumb up that's sweet <laughs> any, anybody want to comment well i'll comment for you i think it's fantastic right uh so some questions would Steve have any idea who you are? Today, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. How? What do you mean? Like, are you in contact with him? No, I haven't seen him in forever, but I'm sure if our paths crossed, he would he would know who I am. Right, okay. Well, what I'm saying is like, yeah, that's important, right? Because if you ever could write a letter to him, how awesome would it be? Or you could call on that thing and say, oh my God, what a great hike that was. And how great it was to just 
like not have to worry about the nonsense that was going on at my house, right? That's a really, really good thing. So my question is that number two is you said it was your was a sister. It, it ended up being the the sister in my life that anybody who's associated with lending hearts knows she's the reason I, I started this. So she's she was that kid sister, but I was that also that second mom because of mm -hmm. our age difference. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Yeah, I can really imagine. Well, how wonderful. It was the surprise in the family. My mom thought yeah. uh, she had a bladder infection. <laughs> ah. oh <laughs> if we want to get <laughs> It's good to laugh. I mean, like you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe, it. but uh, it's so funny. And and she knows it. So it, it always makes uh, for laughs all the time. I said, we spend more time laughing at ourselves than anything else. Oh my gosh. Well, um, that's a wonderful thing. And you know what? If you were to continue that, you might title it Hike to the Waterfall, right? You might title it that. And then you can continue to talk about why it was so important to you and then what happened because of that. And right. And it all stems from the gratitude that somebody knowingly or unknowingly gave you attention or you're open to receiving attention at the exact right time and stuck with you. I, I, that's beautiful. Right. And I think if you don't write about it, you don't think about it nearly as much and you certainly don't process it or understand the emotion behind it. So that's a, I know it was tough for you, but that's a perfect exercise for you. Perfect. Barb, Kurt, Janice, anyone that's muted? Barb, I love it. I love it. Can you, um, you want to share with us? Yes. So mine comes from trauma from when I was in kindergarten. At my great uncle Blair's funeral. Who doesn't have trauma in kindergarten? Oh, um, we feel you. <laughs> we feel you. Talk, talk to us. Let us know what you. Let us know what you wrote. Okay. So, hey, random aunt, and I don't know if it was an aunt or a cousin. Mm -hmm. So, my both of my parents' family has a lot. Anyway, um, I don't know if you remember the little girl at Blair Trusky's funeral that grabbed onto your leg for dear life. But that was me. I had gotten separated from my parents in the sea of foreign people mourning the loss of my great uncle Blair. It was I was scared and terrified. I sought the comfort of my mom, who was also wearing a beige coat. Unfortunately, I mistook your leg for hers and still traumatized today for having picked the wrong leg to seek protection. Your reaction was scarring. Oh, like she screamed, everybody like around her. It, it was, oh, it, it was bad. It was very, very bad. I can remember like it was yesterday. Seriously. Wow. I was like, I was not expecting you to say that. I thought the trauma was just you grabbing somebody's leg. I did not think the trauma was them screaming because you did it. Yes. Yes. And, and and looking up and thinking that it was my mom and looking up that it was not her. Like it was like almost like a um uh uh what's it called? Um like a twilight zone moment, like you like you you're in a dream and then you look down and there's like some weird monkey person or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, 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 it was scary. <laughs> Well, I bet it was, I bet you feel it. Okay. So mm -hmm. your, your reaction, it was jarring. Mm -hmm. You could continue that narrative for a while. Mm -hmm. And right. then maybe you can continue on the narrative of if maybe there's some exploring you can go, of mm -hmm. maybe perhaps it affected your personality. Maybe perhaps it made you sit next to nobody anywhere in a situation like that. Cause God forbid you didn't want that to happen again. Right. It could be a number of different things, but you could go there. Uh, I have a friend who went, uh, he was a comedian who became a hypnotherapist. Then he became a comedian hypnotherapist. And now he's, he's a real therapist. Really interesting. Why I tell you that is he, he, he's a brilliant dude, but he's, he's been in every, 
you know, scenario, like, you know, bring people on stage and make them dance around like a monkey or whatever. But um, uh, he has this theory and it hit me. And I always tell him I still, I still from it, but he has this theory, this way he explains how we deal with trauma and how we deal with emotion is he says, if you go back to when you were a little kid and your earlier memories, the better, certainly five years old or kindergarten ish is pretty early. He goes, when you, when you see something positive, positive tr trauma, like, like a good thing, positive thing that happened to it, you tend to see that five-year-old doing whatever. And when it's a negative trauma, you tend to feel that thing. Like when she screamed, you don't see the kid getting jump up and, and like, what the hell? You feel like, oh, shoot. I, you, just, you feel it. And he's like, that's why you have to explore negative trauma because you see the positive. That's not you, man. I don't connect with that person, but man, do you feel the negative, right? Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, anyway, so when I was telling you the story about the little girl and the lollipop, I wasn't sitting there. I was walking up, seeing this thing happen, right? Because that, that wasn't me. It was a good thing. Couldn't have been me, right? Mm -hmm. But if it was a negative thing, man, I, I would say I could feel it. I, like there's another prompt I use it's not too far away from yours. I was like eight or nine years old and I dropped the, the, the fly ball after school um, that was not supposed to be dropped. And some, one of the other kids came by and, and, and kicked me right in the nuts. And, and, and I'm screaming on the, on, the, on the ground. And one of the girls that was there came by and she thought it would be funny to spit on me. And I, I actually brought that up to her at, 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 a, at a 10 year high school reunion. I go, remember when we were like in second or third grade and you spit on me? And she was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do that. And, and I went and got the yearbooks off the, off the table. You know, they put the yearbooks at your, your thing. And I, and I open up, I go, that was me. She goes, oh shit, I spit on you. <laughs> I go, oh my God, I'm such a terrible person. I go, yeah, you're a terrible person. Yeah. What eight year old spits on a kid that just got kicked in the privates. And I go, but when I, when I write about, when I think about, I feel it. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. I feel it. So negative emotion. I love that, that you did that. And where I would say that you could be helpful to yourself and caring to yourself is to, is to explore from jarring forward. Keep, mm -hmm. You set the stage wonderful. I feel you. You feel you. Now maybe you could write a little bit more about how that might have affected you. And, and, and through your letter to that, aunt or cousin explore your emotion about it thanks yeah really great anybody else we have time for one more to share for sure i'll share nice is, uh, is this sean yes wonderful okay sean okay by the way you're looking awful blue today <laughs> uh, mine's also kindergarten Dear Sammy, I don't even remember what year you stopped going to school with us. We were never friends. And one year you were there and the next you weren't. It could have been second grade. It could have been eighth grade. What I remember about you is you were obsessed with my grandma when she came to help in our kindergarten class. And I did not like it one bit. You followed her around the classroom calling Anna, Anna, and you wanted to chat with her and show her things. And she was supposed to be mine. I was shy and I didn't like you interloping on the time I felt comfortable in class with my grandma there. When I told my grandma you bothered me, she told me I needed to be kinder, that there was plenty of attention to go around. I remember one day you hugged her and I absolutely could not believe you would be so bold. And she hugged you back. I did not think of these events for probably 25 straight years until I started working with foster kids myself and saw some of their behavior that reminded me of you. I couldn't possibly have known at the time that other kids had it different and that they didn't have grandmas that came to their classrooms. By the time I had this realization, my grandma was already gone. Wow. If I knew somebody that would do it, that's being published. That's so beautiful. I mean, <laughs> how beautiful, right? Lizzie's got a pounding heart there for you. I mean, that is amazing. That is really great. What a great story. Have you ever written that before? No. Have you thought about it? Yeah, I thought about him. I thought about this kid a lot. 
over yeah. the past few years since the memory first came back to me. And I, I've even tried to find him, but I can't. <laughs> he has <Right>. a common name. <laughs> so uh, sorry to put you on the spot, but I just got to have a quick question. Um, how did it make you feel to write about it versus having thought about it? M more emotional and kind of uh, upset at wishing. I mean, there's only so much you can do when you're a little kid, but just kind of wishing I had more emotional maturity. Mm -hmm. or and I paid more attention to him throughout you know elementary school because it was obvious he probably needed somebody yeah a lot of times that letter that we write uh is to ourselves even though it's to someone else right so you were writing a letter but it was for you to say oh my gosh if I could have only known that maybe you didn't have a grandmother too how lucky was I right and it's right. like, man, to, to think it, but to write about it are just different things. And thank you for being so bold to read about it. Uh, reading it, did it sound different than you writing it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Every once in a while when we do this, something happens so profound that I beg the person to promise me to go read it in front of the mirror later. <laughs> uh, and, and if you ever... Uh, have the guts to do that you, you look like an idiot to yourself but do it the one story that sticks with me is this absolutely brave and, and beautiful woman going through a really really difficult time and um she, i asked our prompt was to write a letter of forgiveness and uh, i'm gonna get I, I almost tear up thinking about it but um she wrote a letter of forgiveness to somebody that was so mean to her and it was something like um you know I never I never listened to you and you always tell me to take care of my health and I just always put it off and I just I don't you know I wish you wouldn't lecture me and then I, I wish I would have listened to you it's this whole thing and now I'm so pissed off at you because if I would have listened to you then I would have gone to the doctor sooner I wouldn't have the difficult problems that I have right now and it was really really emotional and she said, but after writing this letter, I'm not going to hate you anymore. And she named the person and that person in the letter was her. And I went, oh, my God, I like the whole room just was like they could just feel for her. And I said, I said to her, could you read that letter to yourself in the mirror? Could you could you do that? And she did. And she came back. We, we, we did. We did another one a month later. And I said, how was that? And she goes, I was bawling my eyes out for like an hour. She goes, and I felt so good that I forgave myself. And I don't think I would have if I didn't read it. I wrote it, which was really hard. And sharing it was really hard. She goes, but if I didn't read it to myself, she goes, I don't think I would have forgiven myself, but I, I'm, I've forgiven myself. And I'm like, wow, that's the power of expressive writing. So um, what I'd like to do, if you have the time to stick around to do another uh, prompt, this one would be more intentional. And it's my belief, we don't always do this, but beginning of the year is a good time to do this one. It's my belief that the brain is the most fertile soil in the land. And if we plant a seed there, it will grow. Right? If, if we tell ourselves what an idiot we are for dropping a weight on our toe, uh, it's going to keep growing. And every time I tell that story, I'm going to say what a bigger idiot I was. Okay. So if you plant the seed, it'll grow. And um, I think that's the truth with negative emotion. If we if we if we keep the negative emotion there, um, and we and we water it and we take care of it, even if protecting it, it's going to keep growing and it's going to get more negative. Same thing with the positive. So what I would like to do, and this one has a couple of rules around it. This prompt has a couple of rules around it. I would like you guys to plant some seeds. And you're going to write a letter to yourself. And please do, please do this one if you can't finish it tonight. Uh, certainly in the next coming days, maybe over the weekend even, you could finish the letter to yourself. I want you to write a letter to yourself, but here's the rules. I want you to write it present tense. Hey, is anybody uh, on the web, can anybody look up what the first day of spring is? Okay, you're gonna write it present tense. And you are going to 
mention a few of the really crappy things that happened to you in 2022 emotionally that you're still grip, grip, grappling with. Did you look up the first day of spring? Anybody? Somebody do that for me in the background. So you're going to, you're going to write a letter to yourself in the present tense. And you're going to talk about some things that happened in 2022 negatively that you're grappling. Ah, Monday, March 20th. You, you guys are the best. Thank you. So we're going to open up this letter on Monday, March 20th. It's exactly two months from now. And you're also going to write some things that you were grateful for in 2022. There has to be something. I don't care what it was. Maybe it was the one time that you didn't plan for dinner when somebody came over and you threw something together and it was the best dinner you had. Maybe it was one day where you didn't feel pain. I don't, I don't know what the things you could be grateful are. It may, you know, little or big doesn't matter. But I want you to identify a few things that you grappled with emotionally that were crappy things that happened to you in 2022. And I want you to think of a couple of things that you can be grateful for. And those are your seeds. And we're planting them in a letter, present tense. And your prompt is going to be, today is March 20th, 2023. Today is March 20th, 2023. There were a few tough things in 2022. There were a few great things in 2022. So that's how you're going to start it. And then what I want you to do is to write a letter in the present tense. I Even if you haven't, I want you to write it. I have forgiven my friend for flaking on me for the 10th freaking time when I needed them. Because that was one of the crappy things that happened in 2022 is one friend kept flaking on you. And you're going to write it in present tense. Today, I have forgiven that person. Maybe you, have, maybe you haven't right now. Or whatever you're still, still hanging around that you're grappling with in an emotional, negative way. On March, 20, on, on March 20th, you're going you're gonna to have like used it to your benefit. I have gotten stronger because of these negative things that happen. I have learned to adapt because of these negative things that happen. I have learned to forgive because of these negative things that have happened. Then on the positive, on the things you're grateful for, you're going to say, I've had two months since I wrote it down to enjoy the gratitude. I, I feel so much stronger about this positive thing that happened because I forced myself to be grateful for it. So I want you to write a letter in your own words, that starts the way that I said. Today is March 20th, 2023. And I, in the present tense, have used these negative things and these positive things as a, as a seed that I planted that's now grown to my benefit. Does that make sense, everyone? This is ridiculous ridiculously powerful by the way i have a friend who very very close friend uh he's married to a woman who um they just they're celebrating their 10-year anniversary they have two young kids and uh, she has uh two sisters so the three sisters they they lost their mom to breast cancer when they were in uh, middle school and grade school and um she's very you know very, very traumatized over it still um, she was very, very close to her mom. And they grew up on this one street in Southern California in a very, very wealthy neighborhood. Um, and it was a wonderful childhood up until that time, right? And um, he told me something that was simply amazing. He goes, David, he goes, you know how I'm like the cheapest person in the world? And I go, yeah. 
He goes, well, 20 years of savings, every single penny. Guess what we just did? I said, what? He said, we closed on a house 12 doors down from the house that Kimmy grew up in. And I go, oh my God, that's amazing. And he goes, yeah. He goes, all she wanted to do was to get back to the neighborhood. That's it. She just wanted to be back in the neighborhood that she grew up in because our kids, they have two kids. They are going to love it. They're going to love it. And if you can imagine, we we're able to get a house 12 doors down from the house that she moved into. And side note, the, the dude that owns that house remembers her and her sisters. How cool is that this many years later? And I go, oh, my God. He goes, Dave, you're never going to believe what happened. And I said, what? He goes, well, you know, Kimmy went back into real estate recently. This was like a year and a half ago that she went back into real estate. I go, yeah. He goes, so, you know, he's telling me the whole thing. He goes, so when we closed the deal. She went to the closet and she got a letter. She wrote herself a letter. After they talked about is she going to go back to work or not? Because the second kid was cold enough to be taken care of. And she said, I'm going to go back into real estate. The reason I'm going to go into real estate is so that I can become prolific in Southern California, in Orange County, in this one area. And I know that by the time it's the right time, I'm going to find a house on XYZ Street, down the street from where I live, if I can't find the same house I grew up in, and I'm going to buy that house. And he goes, I'm bawling my eyes out. Because how in the world did she make that happen? She got a career, the whole thing. She planted the seeds. I mean, how stupid is that? Now, I'm not one of these guys that says like, ooh, I'm all spiritual, whatever. But oh my God, tell me that that's not a coincidence. There had to be something with the seeds that were planted. There has to be. So I want you to plant a couple of seeds. Okay, maybe great things will happen like you find in the dream house. Maybe great things will happen like, you have realized how to forgive a friend or forgive yourself because of something crappy that happened. I don't know. But I want you to write that letter and we're going to start it. We're going to take like eight minutes to start it. And if anybody is great, we'll share before we 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 um before we end the, the night. But start that, start that letter of gratitude. And it is 514 where I'm at. We're going to come back in eight minutes. But start the letter. This is an important one. Any questions or comments, hit me up in the chat. I'm here. Okay.
Here should be wrapping up my timers right. I didn't press it, but I got an internal timer. So maybe one more minute. Okay, are we good? Anybody wanna pop on? We didn't put everybody to sleep yet, did we? Oh my goodness, Lizzie's still up. I gotta meet Lizzie one day. Kurt and Janice, Barb, Basso, you're all um, brave enough to show your faces. How did that go? How did that start out? Anybody? It was terrible because we start. I started off with negative and then went to the positive and should have started with the positive. Ah, why you hung around with the negative too much? Yeah. Did you did you keep? Were you able to keep it present though, Barb? Were you able to say today is this and or did you just list it first? Um, I just listed it first. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I found this to be very, very difficult to write. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of very difficult to write because I'm still angry <laughs> about my negative. So uh, I mm -hmm. haven't, it, 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 coming up with a positive for 2022 is um, challenging. I, I can think of more negative than positive. Yeah. So obviously I need to do more to be more positive well uh, no don't don't judge yourself like that you definitely don't need to but but could you is the question right could you could, could you find something positive you know like like if if, if you were your if you were a friend mm -hmm. of the person that went through what you went through mm -hmm. would, would and you said to them oh come on man there's got to be something come on please tell me something good that happened they you would really want them to tell you something good, right? I mean, yeah, because you want to make them feel good about something. You care about them enough, right? Right, yeah. And may maybe it's going to be a stretch. I don't know, man. I don't know what was good. Okay, well, think about it. Just think maybe there was something. Something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was the colors of a sunset that you never saw before. And it's like, right. how about maybe it was one time they had the energy to go outside and, and feel the sun while it was setting. I don't even know what they are. But if you really right. think hard, even if it's something stupid like that, mm -hmm. you you could be grateful for that. That could have been a good memory from last year. And then you could say, today is March 20th, 2023. And I'm really grateful that sometime last year, I saw these crazy colors that I didn't see before. It wasn't the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life, but at least from, from last year, that was something that I remember. And today, two months later, from writing this letter, I thought about that a couple of times. I seen that color on a on 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 cars driving down the street. I seen that color on a piece of cake, and it made me smile. Or what? Right? 
-hmm. And it's just plant, plant the seed. Right. Just write that letter to yourself as if it were two months from now so that you could say, is there something I can get that's positive off of that? Okay. For sharing. It's, these are not easy. These are, trust me, these are not easy. What's it, what's, what I can promise you is, look, there was some uh, studies done in the 70s about expressive writing. A okay. very famous one out in Texas. And it's been used many times in many, many studies since then that have shown there are absolutely measurable physical benefits from expressive writing. Hmm. Physical health benefits, lowering of stress, lowering of blood pressure, a better uh, a burning of fat, um, a, a, a lower cholesterol. What? From expressive writing? Yeah, it's proven. There are health benefits. Forget about the psychological, emotional benefits. There are health benefits to it. That's why a lot of people do journaling and expressive writing because there's some health benefits to it. So it's not easy, but it's really, really good for you. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. it mm -hmm. will be easier over time. Yes, Barb. So uh, I, I know everybody's going to look at me like I'm lost my mind because I have. Um, but, you know, there's a certain amount of me being on Facebook again. You're going to look mm -hmm. at me like I've lost my mind. I get it. But, you know, a certain amount of just posting and writing like, hey, today this happened, which was good. Um, I think is that. Maybe you can kind of talk about like. Yes, Facebook's bad because you keep on scrolling and then you doom scroll and you see bad things. But how much of. Facebook posting about, hey, this happened to me good today, or hey, this happened to me bad today, is technically journaling, but kind of publicly journaling. Oh, yeah, I I totally hear you on that. And by the way, you're not crazy. Mm -hmm. And the, well, the fact that we're all figments of your imagination, and you see all these different names and faces, yeah, you're crazy, because we don't actually exist, right? Okay, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. But um, yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I, I have my personal opinions. And I have professional opinion. My professional opinion is anything that you write that could be self-care, whether it's getting out a negative emotion or positive emotion is a form of caring about yourself. That's great stuff, mm -hmm. right? So yes, my, my personal opinion is most of the stuff that people write is not true. It's just not true. It's just, it's just not true. And I, I have no problem with you feeling like crap and walking into a place saying, I feel great. I feel great. Okay. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Different difference than, than, yeah. Oh my God. I'll never forget. I was at a baseball game a couple of years ago and this girl in front of me, she might've taken like 7,000 freaking pictures. And because I'm standing behind her and she's doing a selfie, I'm seeing her face on the camera and the smiles are amazing when she's, pressing the button but in between she's got the most sour puss on her face and i'm like really i mean you need seven thousand pictures of you fake smiling mm -hmm. how is that how is that helping anybody in the world so i believe a lot of that stuff is fake and i don't know that it's therapeutic at all i don't know if it's caring for yourself at all i think it might be the opposite but i would say anything that's done with authenticity mm -hmm. and with intention is usually a really really good thing okay that's that's my opinion Interesting. Anybody want to share what they wrote? We're running up against time, but I want you to stick around for the ending because I got something fun for you. Anybody? Yes, Janice. Not Kurt. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, so I'll do this quick because you're running. We're running up against time. So today is March twentieth, twenty twenty three. So I've had some time to ponder over the actions of my brother Mark. During 2022, my family celebrated three amazing weddings, one of which was my son, and the other two were my nephews. My brother is a very strong-willed, old-school practicing Catholic and has on many occasions voiced his opinions, I'm sorry, voiced his judgmental opinions of family members. He made it well known that he was unhappy with the way his nephews decided not to be married in the Catholic Church and refused to attend any of them. I'm a practicing Catholic and I would lo have loved to see them all get married in church, but I believe his actions only tend to push them further away. 
I'm not angry at my brother anymore because I was initially, but I feel sorry for my brother. I've decided to pray daily that he finds the love in his heart that God would want him to share. That's wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Who can't relate to all of the emotion that's going on in there? Right? Yeah. You have a really, there's a couple of things that you shared. You have a good way of like really um, setting the stage to explore things, right? Really good. Kurt, hopefully she's a good communicator to you as she is to herself. Um, so <laughs> what I would do is if you can, if you want to finish that letter, and I really highly suggest you do, and how great would it be if uh, if you wrote Basso a note going, hey, it's March 20th, and I open up my letter to myself, and I feel a little bit better about X, Y, and Z. How cool would that be? Um, but continue to keep it in the first person and present, and what do you hope? It's going to be your present self in a couple of months about the way you feel about something. Write it, write it down as if you're already there. Even yeah. if you're not, you might not be. When you open it up, you might get, what the hell is I thinking? <laughs> right, I'm, still, I'm still angry at him as, as ever. But but right, but, but I'm saying that that's a really good way to do your expressive writing. And if we're lucky enough to do another one of these, that's up to that's up to your 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 host here. Um, then we can take that letter and use that as a prompt as well. Okay. It was interesting and fun. I enjoyed it. It's wonderful. Um, what I said I would promise you, uh, Barb, is it does get easier. It, I know it's hard, but it gets easier because you you adopt the tools and you get yourself into a mindset. You know, I said at the beginning, uh, who you're writing to, what are you writing, and why. There's there's a couple of more we could add. Where, right? So where are you going to write? Because that's really important. Because if you do that regularly, the where. Then your mind already knows when I get to this spot, that's that's my writing spot. And you can just get right into it. You don't have to get yourself all set up for it, whatever. If you can find a where, that where now becomes where you write. It's really cool. So there we go. The last thing I'm going to leave you with, if you're okay with this, is the three most important words in writing, especially in expressive writing, is tell me more. Okay. Can I share a one minute and 20 second clip of a, oh, I hope it'll show. I don't know if it'll show. Hopefully it'll show. Can I show a one minute? Can I share my screen and show a one minute and 20 second clip of a movie? I don't believe it has bad language. I'm hoping that it doesn't, but I'm going to share this. And this is going on this. Tell me more. Can you guys uh, see the, um, that scene right there, can, can, ah, dang it. It just says you started to screen share, but nothing has come up. Why? Because I don't know that I could screen share a, let me, let me hang on, um, uh, something on YouTube. Let me see, stop. Yeah, no, you, you, you should, should be, be able, able to. I should be able to, let me try that yeah, again. Yeah, you just have to, you know. You have to select open. it. Yeah. Do you see that picture there? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, you ready? Yes. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this right here. So, Dave, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Well, I'm a an executive assistant at a major pet products company. Dave, I don't want you to tell us what you do. I want you to tell us who you are. Oh, all right. Um, I'm a pretty good guy. I am. I like playing tennis on occasion. Uh, also. Not your hobbies, Dave. Just simple. Tell us who you are. I just... Maybe you could give me an example of what a good answer would be. Um, what did you say? <laughs> you want Lou to tell you who you are. <laughs> no, I just... Uh, I'm a nice, easygoing man. I might be a little bit indecisive at times. Um, Dave. You're describing your personality. I want to know who you are. I don't know what the hell you want me to say. I mean, I'm sorry. I just I don't want to answer your question. It's not not doing it right, I, I guess. I think we're getting a picture, Dave. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, who are you? 
right? <laughs> He's trying to express who he is. And they're like, you're missing the point. That is my favorite scene from that movie. It's such a great movie. I've never ever seen Anger Management. It's it's a really good movie. But um, it goes to that point of tell me more. Like really to get into who the heart of who you are and how you feel about things. Whoop. Hang on. Oh, sorry, I got to close this. Sorry about that. Um, you got to you got to say um, you got to say, tell me more. So when you're doing any kind of writing. Yeah, you, I, I, I like that. Who, who are you? But I, but tell me more. Like, tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. OK. And and and, and the way that you get to tell yourself tell me more is is why is that? I, I felt angry at Mark at that wedding. Why is that? Well, tell me more. OK. And, and and same thing with 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 you, Barb. When you're coming up with something that's negative and you want to write about it, why is that? Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. So when you do an expressive writing, more is more is better. So don't worry about being wordy, Vasto, because you want to tell me more. You got to uncover. You got to go deeper and deeper and deeper and tell me more. So um, uh, get to the heart of the matter. So anyway, that would be the end of our thing. Most of you stuck around. Thank you a ton for sticking around and doing this with me. Thank uh, you, David. Yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you, Deborah. Um, and and Lizzie too, with the clapping and the hearts. We, we, that's really sweet. Thank you. Um, Kurt and Janice, definitely continue. Kurt, I don't know if you're writing or not, but if you are, um, continue it. Janice, you have two really good pieces that you can start from and continue on. Everybody else do that. And if you don't do anything else, uh, set aside some time to finish this letter to yourself, however hard it is, Barb. Uh, and it's okay if it's all it's 90% negative and one positive thing, but at least give yourself one positive seed that you can say two months from now, I have used that positive seed over the last two months in the following ways. And just see what happens. Maybe two months from now, you've reconciled some negative emotions. And maybe two months from now, you've had a greater sense of gratitude, even if it's not had a major effect on you or whatever you know what i'm saying cool all right uh, i will uh, come back again if you so desire and um keep it up and Vasa knows how to get a hold of me if there's any questions comments concerns whatever i'm, I'm pretty responsive so other than that thanks for staying up late and have a wonderful night all thank you david thank you, thank you. Good night, yes, you're welcome take care bye-bye